Hello and welcome to this video on the Raspberry Pi. This is the Raspberry Pi 2 Model B. This video is the second one of three. The first video was an introduction and setup of the Raspberry Pi. This video shows the traffic light project and the third video shows how to scrape data from the internet. OK, so let's get started. Let's take a look at the ports that we shall be using in these three videos. There are two sets of two USB ports, an Ethernet port, an HDMI port, a port for the power supply and the GPIO general purpose input output header pins. It is the power from these pins that we will use in our traffic light project. On the underside of the Raspberry Pi is the micro SD card slot and here there is a micro SD card inserted. It is on this card that we shall install the operating system for the Raspberry Pi. On the right is the micro SD card and on the left is the adapter. Here is the micro SD card in its packaging without the adapter. This shows a micro SD card, an adapter and a reader. This shows the wireless USB adapter. For the traffic light project we will require some coloured LEDs. Here there are red, amber and green LEDs. We shall also require some resistors so that we don't draw too much current from the Raspberry Pi. 360 to 750 ohm resistors will suffice. And here we have a prototyping breadboard. This shows a single strip of breadboard. And this is the IDC 40-way ribbon cable, 300 millimeter, female to female. This is the breakout board for that ribbon cable. And here is the precision screwdriver set. A multimeter is useful or a continuity tester or continuity checker. For testing purposes, it is useful to have several batteries and a battery holder available. This shows a case for the Raspberry Pi. We now move on to the installation of the operating system onto the micro SD card. This is using a Windows based PC. Firstly, create a folder named Raspberry Pi on your PC. Then go to the raspberrypi.org website and click on the Downloads tab as shown. Clicking on that tab takes you to this page, then click on the Raspbian tab. That will then take you to this page, then click on the Download Zip tab. A closer look at that page shows this. We are downloading Raspbian Jesse, the full desktop image. Download that zip file into the Raspberry Pi folder previously created. Go back to the web page and click on the installation guide. That will take you to this page. Click on the Windows tab towards the bottom of the page. This shows you that page zoomed in. Click on the Windows tab. That will take you to this page which is well worth reading. You will require a utility to write the image to the micro SD card. Download that from the suggested source. Save that into the folder previously created and install the disk imager onto your PC. That is the icon on the desktop. If you do not already have one, install a utility to unzip the compressed folder. This shows the Raspbian image unzipped. Start the Win32 disk imager. Click on the folder as shown and locate the image file. Connect the micro SD card up to the computer. Click on the right button. It is advisable to use a switch power supply. Insert the micro SD card with the operating system into the micro SD slot on the underside of the Raspberry Pi. Attach a wired keyboard, a wired mouse, an HDMI connection to a monitor and a wireless internet connection. Make certain that the monitor is powered. Connect the power supply to the Raspberry Pi. Switch on the power supply and look at the monitor.
If this is the very first boot up of the Raspberry Pi, the configuration tool will be shown automatically. On subsequent boots, the command sudo raspy-config may be used to open the tool. Move the cursor to the Wi-Fi icon in the top right hand corner and select the Wi-Fi network and enter the passkey. LX terminal is the small black rectangle at the top left hand corner. Move the cursor to that and click. Using the prefix sudo allows super user commands to be run by a normal user. This shows the Raspberry Pi now in its case and with the ribbon cable attached. This shows the breakout board with the ribbon cable attached. Please note that the pins for the breakout board are numbered. It is useful to print out a copy of the GPIO header pins. It is also useful to write in the equivalent pin number from the breakout board. We will now look at the Python code for the traffic light project. For the traffic light sequences, we need to make allowances for time delays. We have two sets of traffic lights named Sequence A and Sequence B.
We are now looking at the breadboard. We now test that all lights are working. We then test each light individually. Both of the red lights then come on. This is the failsafe. We then have on sequence A a red and amber light and then only a green light. After a short interval the green light goes out, the amber light comes on and then the amber light goes out and the red light comes back on. Then sequence B goes through the same phases red and amber, green, amber and then red. That is the end of this video. Thank you for watching.